I'm on Bondi Beach in Sydney, Australia. And I want to talk to you about ozone because there's an interesting paper that's just been published about ozone and the effect on the weather in Australia. Let's start with oxygen in the atmosphere. That is oxygen perhaps 30 kilometers above the Earth's surface. Now imagine an O2 molecule here. This can absorb ultraviolet light from the sun and the energy of the absorbed light can blow the molecule apart. So you now have two oxygen atoms. And because the atmospheric pressure is low, these will fly apart. Here, I've got another oxygen atom that's been formed by dissociating O2. And if it flies along and hits another O2 molecule, so we have O plus O2, they can react to form ozone, which is O3. And O3, ozone, is another form of oxygen which is highly coloured. It's a sort of dark blue colour, the molecule. And as it sits in the upper atmosphere, it absorbs the harmful UV light and stops it coming down to the Earth's surface with very high intensity and protects us all from the effects of the sunlight. And in fact, the ozone absorbs light itself and falls apart to form O2 and oxygen, but this oxygen atom can recombine to make more ozone. So there's an equilibrium. The ozone's falling apart, but it's being made at the same rate as it falls apart. This is what happened until people started using aerosols for things like styling their hair, you know, psh. And when they started making these aerosols, in the aerosols, they put a molecule rather like this which has carbon in the middle, three fluorine atoms, and a chlorine atom. So this is CF3Cl. I've used another Earth, but it's much bigger, so this is chlorine. So here we have a molecule, which in itself is completely harmless, with three fluorines and a chlorine bonded to the carbon. But when, this, when you spray your hair, or you used to with old-fashioned um, hairsprays, these molecules went into the atmosphere and floated around and eventually got up to 30 kilometers high. And when they got there, this molecule would absorb UV light and expel the chlorine atom. So now, high up above the Earth's surface, as well as the oxygen atoms, you have a chlorine atom. And the chlorine atom could, can react with ozone and remove one of the oxygens. So you now have ClO. ClO is not very stable, and so it reacts further to release the chlorine atom. So the chlorine atom will go on and knock out one ozone molecule after another until it's probably knocked out perhaps a thousand ozone molecules. The effect is that these molecules here with fluorine chlorine and carbon, the so-called CFCs, can, if they get into the atmosphere, start destroying the ozone layer. What is particularly striking is the effect that you get over the poles, the Antarctic and the Arctic, because over the Antarctic and Arctic you get very small ice crystals in the air, and the chlorine atoms can be absorbed onto the surface of the ice crystals during the <coughs> polar night when the sun is not shining onto the surface of the, of the earth. And then when the sun comes back up in the spring, like the spring now in the southern hemisphere, then a large amount of chlorine is released all at once and it can completely destroy the ozone, causing a so-called ozone hole, where the UV light can get right down to the Earth's surface. Of course, there's very little life in the Antarctic, so the UV light going down does not affect many organisms, 
But what it does do is that it changes circulation patterns in the atmosphere. And this recent paper suggests that the whole ozone hole over the Antarctic is in fact causing rainfall to shift southwards from Australia and therefore might explain the droughts and things that have been happening recently on this continent. Now, you might ask, why is the effect worse in the southern hemisphere than the northern hemisphere? And the answer is really simple, because if you look at the Earth, let's turn the chlorine back into the Earth and look at the Earth, you can see the Antarctic is a land mass, whereas the Arctic on the other side is sea. So the temperatures over the Antarctic are much lower than those over the Arctic. So you get far more of these ice crystals in the air and therefore the effect on the chlorine and the atmospheric chemistry is much more pronounced. Scientists first discovered the effects of CFCs and chlorine in the atmosphere in the late 1970s. And shortly afterwards, the use of CFCs in aerosols was banned but so many of them have already been released in the atmosphere, they're still slowly drifting up to the upper atmosphere from the, near the ground where we first released them. So the effect with the Arctic and Antarctic ozone holes is going to persist for many more years, but eventually the CFCs will be washed out of the atmosphere and all being well, this problem will disappear. There's one extra twist. The ozone in the upper atmosphere is really very beneficial. Life on Earth wouldn't really exist without it. But ozone in the lower atmosphere near the Earth's surface is not at all good because ozone is a very reactive molecule. It can lose oxygen in all sorts of different ways, reacting with organic compounds and can cause serious health problems to people. And over the last century or so, the amount of ozone near the Earth's surface has increased because of a number of reactions in the atmosphere promoted by the sun, usually involving oxides of nitrogen, which can be produced by emissions from car exhausts and so on. And recently, the Royal Society produced a report on the effect of ozone near the Earth's surface, so-called ground-level ozone. Their real worry is that ozone at ground level is a serious health problem because when the weather is very hot and bright, the ozone levels go up and this contributes to deaths, particularly during heat waves.